Hello, Faithful Eagle here. Today we'll be talking about a verse by verse teaching from the Bible how you can know that you're saved and you're going to heaven. Without further ado, let's begin by prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We ask you bless the listeners who are listening in, in this video. I ask this in Jesus' name, Amen. Throughout the video, I'll have a link in the description of this document so you can always view it <clears throat> at your own time, right? I encourage you in the video, this is going to be a little bit long and thorough. And I have a good reason for that. I wanted to do the best of my ability to teach the Word of God to make clear how you know how to get to heaven. So anytime, feel free to pause the video, examine the scriptures I provide on the screen, and also to click on the link in the document, examine for yourself. I do have a video version. It's a lot shorter, especially from another church. But without further ado, let's get through the scripture, shall we? Okay. First thing you want to make notice that God wants to make sure you have the right Bible. And that's for English speaking people, the King James. It's perfectly preserved for you. So you can know what God's word is. Perhaps I might do a video on that, why King James is the Word of God. But right now, we're just going to focus on the most important part is how to get to heaven. How to get in relationship, right relationship with the Lord. Right? <clears throat> As you can see, stated, Psalms 12, verses 6 through 8, The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of fire, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, this is God, O Lord, thou shalt preserve. From them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when vilest men are insulted. God promised to prom God promised to you and everybody. His word is preserved, uncorrupted, undefiled. That's great news. Alright, now we got that established. What does God's word say? First, God also wants to make sure you can know without doubt in your mind, 100% with certainty, that you're going to heaven. It's first stated in 1 John 5 13, these things I've written unto you that believe. Pay attention to these words I'll highlight and bold and underline. You don't hear this repeated a lot. On the name of the Son of God, that you may know. Here we go. See, God wants you to know you have eternal life, right? How to have this gift, how to get to heaven that lasts forever. Go down more in God's word as we go on. You may believe on the name of the Son of God as Jesus Christ. So first off, God wants to make it his message and his way how to get to heaven very clear and simple. And how one can get saved. And also the most important part. God will never cause confusion. Stated right here in 2 Corinthians 11.3. By fear at least by any means. As a servant that beguiled. Which is a word means deceive Eve. Through his subsil subsility. Sorry if I can't pronounce that word right. So your mind should be corrupted. From the simplicity. That is in Christ. So if you're listening to this or you're watching the video, just know that the way to heaven is simple. God made it simple. We'll go on, you see that as we go on. And here I say in 1 Corinthians 14.33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of saints. So if there's any confusion, if what everyone has told you, it's not from God. God makes it clear and simple how to get to heaven. We're going to continue on. Of course, <clears throat> there's going to be good news. Well, let's get through the bad news. So you can understand the good news. Bad news is, when you and I die, we're going to meet God, and we're going to be judged. Amos 4.12 Therefore, thus I will do unto thee, O Israel, and because I'll do this unto thee, 
Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. This verse is also talking about to the Jews, but it's also talking about to anyone who rejected God's gospel. We're all going to be judged by God. And then the next verse will explain that. <clears throat> Hebrews 9, 27. And it is point unto men, here's, here's a cru crucial point, once to die, but after this is judgment. So people that's, that died and they have spiritual, have a, some kind of spiritual experience from heaven and hell, it's not from God. No one dies and comes back again. As it says right here, men wants to die. It's pointed on to men to wants to die. But after this is judgment. Once you're dead, you're dead. That's it. You're not coming back. Don't believe whatever people say. This is what the word of God says. Okay, and then here's the problem, right? Many people say you have to be a good person, be religious, turn from your sins, etc. But here's the problem. James 2.10 says, if you just sin one time, we're going to hell. You're going to hell, I'm going to hell. Just because we sin one time. Who shall keep the whole law? Yet offend at one point. It's guilty of them all. So you break command one time, that's enough to keep you from going to heaven. You sin one time, that's enough to send any person to hell. And God wants to make it clear, you can't be saved by keeping his law. And there's a person for God's law, and this verse describes it right here in Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. No one can be justified by being religious, being a good person, turning from sin. It doesn't justify you. For the, by the law is the knowledge of sin. The purpose of God's law and the Bible or the Ten Commandments, my heard just an example, is the point that we are in sin and we're in need of a Savior. Right? So repenting your sins, these are your um, Lordship salvationists. Um, and what they mean is turning away from sin. It's actually considered a work in the Bible, and doing, do, doing good deeds is not enough, and can't save you. Or Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for it's by grace, it's God's finished work, right? God did it for you. You are saved, notice right here, by faith, just by believing on Jesus alone, you're saved. Not of yourself, nothing that you did, God did it for you. It is a gift of God, remember this gift part, it's a gift from God. Not of works. Clear as day. Not justified by our works. These a man should boast. Because if we were justified by our works, man would get the glory and not God. But God did the work, so he would get the glory. In other words, it's by faith. Here in Jonah 3.10, here's why the word repentance does not mean turn from sin. Because this will not make sense in this verse, in Jonah 3.10. And God saw their works, right? That they turn from their evil way. So right here, evil way, you can use the same thing as sin, right? So turning from sin is considered an evil work. And here's part where it says, and God repented of the evil. He said that he will do unto them. He did not. See in this verse, repentance does not mean turn from sin. Because here, right here, it says God repented. Is God a sinner? Of course not. So repentance does not mean turn from sin. In fact, the Greek for repentance is metanoia, which just means change your mind. Change your mind from unbelief to belief in Jesus Christ. Right? And even if you think you could be justified, like you're doing really good religious deeds or turn from sin, it's disgusting in God's sight. Isaiah 64, 6, but we are as unclean thing, that all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. We do as phase of leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Your greatest effort is disgusting. Why? To God. Because you're trying to justify yourself. You're being prideful. You're not humbling yourself before the Lord. 
you're trying to save yourself. God just want to let, wants to let you know, don't try to save yourself. Just trust on Jesus. He did the work for you. Right? In Matthew 7, 22, 24. Unfortunately, many people will reject this gospel. And this is what they're going to hear on Jesus on Judgment Day. But if you're tuning in and watching this, I'll explain how you cannot be one of those people. And explain the meaning of this verse. Okay. Matthew 7, 22, 24. This is the words of Christ. May will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in my thy name cast out devils. Right? And in my name done many wonderful works. And I will profess unto them. Here's the part what Jesus said. I never knew you. That means we never had a relationship. These people thought they were Christians, but they didn't. Apart from me, you that work iniquity, be you that work evil. This ain't work apart from God's grace is evil. Notice his people here. Notice they did not what is what they didn't say that proves they were not saved. They trust in their works, right? Prophesying, cast out demons. What they didn't say is, Lord, I believe in you when you die on the cross for my sins, and I trust in that alone. They didn't say that, and that's why many people will go to hell because they refuse to believe in God's word and his gospel. I pray you won't be one of those of the many that will go there. I pray you listen to this and believe in God's word, and you get saved today. And we'll get to good news. So just bear with me. Now, Everybody is going to hell by default. You're not going to hell. They're already going there. It's just because those who have not believed on Jesus, right, are condemned already. John 3, 18. He that believeth, here's that word believe, on him, that's Jesus, is not condemned. You will not lose your salvation, and you will not see hell. Condemned in the Bible, this means what it means. You're condemned. Rejected by God. It means you're going to hell. But here God is saying, if you believe in Jesus, you will never see hell. But he that believeth not is condemned already. See, just because you refuse to trust in Jesus, you're already going to hell, you're already condemned. But because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you're listening to this, the only reason anyone goes to hell is your unbelief. That's the only sin you can't be forgiven is if you refuse to trust on Jesus and what he did on alone on that cross when he died for your sins, that's enough to get you in. So this is straightforward. Everybody's a sinner. You're a sinner, and I'm a sinner. Romans 3, 20, for all have sinned and come short of glory to God. We all broke God's commandments. We all sin at least one time, which is enough to send anybody to hell. In fact, I'll be honest, I sin multiple times, and you have as well too. So no one's good. That's what follows right here. Romans 3, 10. Ezra, none is righteous, no, not one. So no one's good but God. Because of sin, there's death. But God did give us a gift, and we'll come back to that. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Wages is what you earn. But the gift of God is eternal life for Jesus Christ our Lord. Right? So what do we earn? The Bible describes a spiritual death, which is a lake of fire, or what you know as hell. Revelations 4. 1410, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Here in this verse, God's made it clear in hell, um, people think you're separate from God. That's far from truth. God's there. And he's taking credit here. He's doing the torment and the affliction. If you reject his gospel message, if you refuse just to trust in Jesus by faith alone. But God is so good, loving. He's, I'm going to show you through his word. He did something so you never have to worry about hell if you just believe in what his word says. 2014, a death, hell, casting lake fire. This is the second death, right? A spiritual death. Whoever's name... And I found a rip book in life was cast into a lake of fire. Stay forward. In this case, if you think you still make it, the 
God just wants to make sure also clear that there's nothing you can do to be saved. So for those people who are not going to heaven, Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and all sorcerers, and idolaters, and here's the thing, all liars. I told lie before, so I'm one of those liars. If you lie once, that makes you a liar. So you and I are liars. And we, according to this, if we die in our sin right now, we shall have part in the lake with, burn, with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Otherwise, we go to hell. And also, remember what I said earlier, you just need to sin one time. Not enough to send anybody to hell. In fact, some people say, well, I don't lie that much. Well, God also just makes it to be very, very thorough. 21 to 7. And there shall no wise enter into anything that defileth, either who shall work abomination, or here's, and here's saying, maketh a lie. So if you lie one time, we're going to damn, we're going to hell. At which are written in the Lance Book of Life. You can read this if you want, but I think you got the point at this point. We sin one time and I go again, and this is getting a long list of sins. You can read that if you want to. Also, you want to make sure you hear a true gospel. I'm presenting you today a true gospel. Hold on to I'll still get the point how we get saved, right? A false gospel or false Christ is cursed by God. People who preach a false gospel, God has cursed them. There also will be, because of that, many false converts or fake Christians, false brethren, and false teachers. And what they do is they'll twist the scripture, a.k.a. taking verse out of context, for their own destruction. Some people, so prideful in their religious pride, they want to justify themselves so bad, they, don't want, they want to get the glory, and they don't want to give God the glory. Here, Peter is um, in his letter, and then when he's talking about his epistle, he's talking about Apostle Paul. Also, as and also in all his epistle, speaking to them which of these things, there, have, there are some things are hard to understand and true. There's some scripture, it might just take time to read, you might have to read more in one time, or read several books in the Bible, chapters to understand. Which those who are unlearned, right, and unstable to rest, as they do with other scriptures, twist or unto their own destruction. What they do is they take a verse out of context and they just continue to deceive other people and deceiving themselves to the point where they probably will never get saved because they're self righteous, religious, they refuse to believe in God's word. They rather follow their false teachers and not follow the Bible. So I encourage you, if you're listening, go to the Bible. Don't go to the articles. Being careful watching other videos, go to the Bible. And you see, I I gave you tons of scripture. Examine for yourself. See if you're of the faith. It's not a verse in the Bible. In Galatians 1, 8, 9, But if we, this is Paul saying, or, any, or even an angel from heaven, even if you have a spiritual experience, if they give you a different gospel, any other gospel, then that which you have preached unto you, let him be cursed. So it doesn't matter. Even if the angel preaches another gospel, they're cursed by God. And just a little emphasis, as we said before, and then do, and so, so I say now again, if any man preaches another gospel unto you, then you have received, let him be cursed. If I don't give you the gospel, then I'm cursed by God. If I'm no one giving you the gospel, I have studied his word, and I'm giving it to you today. Okay, here's a warning. Do not add or take away God's word. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. If any man shall take away from the words of this book, prophet of this book, which is the whole entire Bible, God shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the Holy City, some things which are written in this book. Let you know, you don't lose your salvation. People whose names taken out of the book were not saved again with. God um, wanted people to be saved. That was his plan in the very beginning, but God gives free will. And many people will reject God and his word, and they'll end up in hell, unfortunately. But it was God's will that everyone goes to heaven. Here, Deuteronomy 4.20, You shall not add on to the word, which command you. Neither shall you be diminished aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of your Lord, your God, which I commanded you. And this is also clued in thoughts you may have, or you may think you have in your head, or your heart, or whatever. Whatever you think you think you heard from God, if it doesn't line up with the Bible scripture, 
reject it because it's not from God. Second Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. For weapons of warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God for rolling down strongholds. Right? Your thought life. Passing down imaginations. Every high theme that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, which is the Bible. Here we go. Bring into captivity every thought and make it to the obedience of Christ, which is the gospel, which is by just believe on Jesus, and you shall be saved. Have readiness to render all his obedience, but your obedience is fulfilled. Okay. Now for a little doom gloom. Let's get to the good news. Pay attention to this part. This is how you can be saved. This is how you can get out of hell today. Now, God loves you and he loves me. And his will is that no one goes to hell. John 6, 40. And this is the will of him, which this is God's will. If you're curious, want to know what it is, here it is. That sent me. This is Jesus, honestly speaking. That everyone which sees the Son and believeth on him, here's that belief part, may have everlasting life. Here's that word again, everlasting or eternal. It means you have this gift from God, and God is never going to take it back from you. You will always go to heaven no matter what. If, God, if you could lose your salvation, that means God lied to you. And it's not a gift. When someone gives you a gift, you keep it. They're not going to take it back from you. Or it's not a gift. And I will rise them up on the last day. Second Peter 3.9 and the Lord is not slack concerning promise, as some men count slackness, and is long suffering toward us. Here's saying, not willing anyone should perish. God wants no one to go to hell, but all should come to repentance. And here, um, I mentioned earlier video, but here's again, here's a Greek lexicon for strong concordance. You can f- there's a link here in the Blue Letter Bible reference. M- Greek word metanoia means change of mind. But like I said earlier, from unbelief to belief. Right? That's what repentance means. You just change your mind. Right? Change your mind what you believe about God. Change your mind what you, th- you thought it took to get you to heaven. Don't trust in your works. Don't in church for being a good person. Trust what Jesus did for you when he died on the cross for your sins and my sins. He rose again. Acts 3.19. Repent, therefore. Change your mind, therefore. And be converted. Believe on Jesus. Get saved today. Be converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I've got some links here. Look at proper context for some verses. You can do that in your own time. All right. You heard me talk about Jesus, right? He died as payment for sins of the entire world. All sins you ever commit, paid for. That means you can be forgiven of every sin. Romans 5, 8. But God commanded his love towards us and that... While we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for you and me. Even while we're still sinning, you and I are still sinning right now, but Christ still paid that payment for your sin and my sin so we can be forgiven, so we don't have to go to hell. Here's what you need to do to get saved. Believe. Hear that word a lot for the Bible. You'll see a lot more, which means to simply trust on Jesus alone and his finished work on the cross, his life, death, and burial, and then resurrection. By faith, just by believing, to be safe from hell, and you can go to heaven. Your right relation with God. Romans eleven six. For if it by if it's by grace, if it's by God's work, then it's no more of works. It has nothing to do with what we did. Otherwise, if that be the case, then it's no longer grace. This grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more no more work. First is saying. If we, if there's any kind of form of work, then it's not God's grace because God did work for you. That's simply what this verse is saying. God did the work for you. You just need to receive this gift. You just need to believe it. Romans 4, 5. But to him, here we go, that worketh not. Again, not being religious, not going to church, not being baptized to be saved. Nothing. You, you did literally nothing. But believe on him, that's Jesus. Justify the ungodly. Here's go. His faith, your faith, my faith, is counted for righteousness. You're in right relation with God the moment you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. Right? Because buried and rose again. If you believe that, you are saved today. It's really that simple. And just go on further. Because God wants to make sure you get this. If anything, here's go. This is a great verse. How to get to heaven. Acts 16, 33, 1, and brought them out and said, Sir, 
what I must do to be saved. How do we be saved from hell? And they said, believe, here we go, on the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. It just said this belief. Believe what Jesus did for you. He died on the cross for your sins, my sins. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less is added. Nothing more is less is added to the Bible. You just need to trust in him. Most famous verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. And who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, have everlasting life. The Bible does teach, and this is also words of Christ himself, whoever would choose to believe in him, it says right here, shall not perish. You will never die. You will never go to hell. And you have this life everlasting. It goes on forever. This is further to beat a uh, dead horse. If this life lasts forever, this gift is for yours. And of course, you can't lose salvation. Because God promised to you, to anyone who believes. Anyone who believes in God and trusts what his word says, you will never lose it. John 5, 24. Very, very, I say unto you. He that heareth my word, you're hearing God's word today, which is the Bible, and believeth on him, that's Jesus, that sent me, here goes Jesus saying this again, has everlasting life, life that goes on forever. And here Jesus wants to make sure you don't misunderstand him. Shall not come into condemnation. You will never be condemned. Again, never be, never have to worry about hell, ever. But is passed from death and unto life. They, and Jesus even repeating himself again, this is crazy. They shall never be condemned for their sins. There you go. Clear as day. But they have already passed from death to life. Jesus repeated himself in this scripture two times. If you trust in him, you will never go to hell if you trust in him alone. So if God's repeating himself, he wants you to pay attention. He wants you to believe his word. John 3, 15. Who shall believe in him? There you go again. Shall not but have everlasting life. Another repeat. Nope. Okay. Does it sound somewhere? John eleven twenty six. You will hear a lot of repeat, but who shall ever liveth and yet believeth in me, that's Jesus. Here we go. Shall never die. There you go. The Bible just confirmed itself at what I just said. You will never die, you never see hell. Here's the thing the Bible asks you this. Do you believe this though? Do you believe what God told you today in his word? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins? He's buried and rose again. God who is um, fully human and fully God live a sinless life. If you do believe that in your heart, you are saved. Let's go on. In this case, I don't have enough verses for you. Hopefully you will believe. John 10, 28. And I give them. Here's a gift. Merit a gift part. God does this gift. He gives this to you. Eternal life. Here we go. And they shall never perish. Here's saying, neither shall any man pluck them out of your hand. You can never lose salvation. No one can take you out of your hand. Not sin. No one. And just in case you think you can jump out of God's hand, which is ridiculous that people do teach and believe, here's another verse for that. In John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. And to him that co comes to me, I will no wise cast out. You're not going to get out of God's hand. God's not going to throw you out. So there you go. You have double assurance. You're safe. You can trust in him. Believe God will keep you preserved. He will always go to heaven, no matter what, if you just believe. John 3, 36. And he that believes the Son have everlasting life. And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God have been in him. If you reject this, and you're saying faith doesn't, alone does not save you, then the wrath of God abides in you today. Because you're rejecting his gospel. You refuse to believe on Jesus. John 6, 4, And this is the will of him that sent me, that anyone who sees the Son and believes in him have everlasting life. I'll raise him up on the last day. As well as for no one to go to hell, right? I'm just checking. These verses sound so similar. I'll make sure I'm not repeating myself. Okay. First Timothy one sixteen for this cause attain mercy that in first Jesus Christ might show forth all long serving as pattern for those who shall hereafter believe in him. Here we go. Two life everlasting, last forever. Second Corinthians five twenty one. He made who knows to be sin for us. He knew no sin, right? Jesus is sinless, that we may be made righteousness in him, right? If you believe this, then of course, you're going to confess this to God. 
that you do believe. Romans 10, 9. If thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Right? For who shall the name the Lord shall be saved? If you believe this, you're safe. And you confess that, hey, I do believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried, did, and he did rise again. Jesus is God, holy man, sinless. You're saved. If you confess that, you're safe. Because you're going to confess what you believe. Ephesians 2, 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but of faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, but we might be justified, here we go, by the faith of Christ, just by trusting Jesus alone. That's all that's required. Not by works of the law, because we can't be justified. For the works of the law, there we go, shall no flesh be justified. And the moment you believe in Christ, you're God's child. God promised this to you, and he's never going to lie to you. Open into your own life, and Titus, sorry, 1, 2, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Galatians 3, 26. Here we go. You are children of God, and this is by faith, by believing in Jesus Christ. The moment you believe, you're saved, and you're God's child. Just because you believe. It's really that simple. 1 John 5, 1. For who shall believe that Jesus is, is the Christ? Here we go. Is born of God. You are born again the moment you believe. Everyone that loves God, that got him love him, is also begotten him. Today, I have given you the true gospel of Christ. Truly, gospel only save is simply by believe on Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. More over, brethren, I clear unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which you have received wherein you stand, but which you are saved. You keep in the memory I preach unto you, unless you believe in flame. Unless you didn't believe this in your heart. Unless you think God's lying to you. Unless you think it can't be that simple or easy. Then yeah, you're not saved. But if you do believe that Jesus um, died for you. And you believe what Christ said. If you believe in me, you have everlasting life. You're saved. For I deliver to you first all of which is also received. How Christ died for our sins. According to the scripture. He is buried. And he rose again on the third day. The scriptures. So that's come to a close. In conclusion. If you believe, trust. And know that you're a sinner. You deserve hell, lake of fire. But you trust in Jesus Christ alone as fully God and fully man. And you die across for all your sins. Was buried and rose again. Then you are saved simply by believing that. And if you are saved, then here are some links to help you in your journey. Please leave a comment if you need help in your journey. And if you did believe in this message, welcome to God's family. You did a great thing. But if you reject this, there's no hope for you. God himself can't help you if you can't believe in his word. All right, be blessed. I pray this be a rich blessing to those who need to hear it. Amen.